80,000 metric tons, approximately 40% of California's total 2020 emissions of 300 and 70 million tons of CO2 came from the state's transportation sector, which produced roughly 100 and 60 million tons of CO2. Emissions of sulfur dioxide and the group of pollutants known as nitrogen oxides, NOx, have also been reduced as a result of the program's efforts to clean up the state's air. The bad news is that Major Duan and colleagues found that the state's poorest neighborhoods didn't benefit from the general improvement in air quality. These areas did not experience the same reductions in sulfur dioxide and NOx emissions, and some even saw an increase in one form of air pollution. The possibility of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and cognitive decline is amplified, according to Meja Duan, because the particles in question are small enough to breach the blood-brain barrier. Having EVs on the road may have a causal effect on that rise. Even if electric vehicles don't contribute to PM2.5 emissions, increased electricity generation that relies on non-renewable sources of energy can. In 2022, about half of California's electricity will come from renewable sources, such as rooftop solar cells. However, a significant amount of the energy used in the state comes from power plants that burn natural gas. Mage Duan argues that while electric vehicles are commonly mislabeled as zero emission vehicles, their environmental impact is limited to the quality of the electricity they draw from. They discovered that half of the state's power facilities are located in the 25% most impoverished areas. He went on to say that the heavier batteries used in EVs contribute to the vehicle's overall mass. Because of brake, tire, or road wear, heavier vehicles can produce as much or more particulate matter than similarly sized cars fueled by fossil fuels. Researchers found that improving the cleanliness of the electric system and making adjustments to the management of the state's generated power would both benefit. Potential EV buyers face a stumbling block in the form of a down payment, paperwork, and a wait of several months before receiving their rebate. Another factor is the general trend toward making larger, more expensive EVs among automakers. For instance, in April, Chevrolet announced that the Bolt, their least expensive EV, would be phased out in favor of electric sport utility vehicles. In addition, not everyone has the same opportunity to use public charging stations. There are also more insidious problems, such as a lack of sufficient multicultural and multilingual outreach about EVs, and the reality that people of color and members of marginalized communities often experience discrimination when trying to purchase vehicles from dealerships. These results confirm the worst fears of experts who have been studying the potential unintended consequences of current initiatives to promote vehicle electrification. Not surprisingly, according to Roman Partita Lopez, Senior Legal Counsel for Transportation Equality at the Greenlining Institute, a nonprofit based in Oakland, California. He added that the state of California is making progress, but that it is not enough. Partita Lopez argues that California and other states seeking zero emissions laws need to change their way of thinking in order to be more deliberate about focusing on the populations that will be most negatively affected. He adds that rebates in particular are unfair because they assume you have the money up front to be able to put down a down payment of several thousand dollars. With all that said, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share this video. If you want to stay in the loop on all things EV, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy